they don't even have to market these events anymore. Honestly, they could just say the UFC is coming to town and they're selling $2 million worth of tickets. That's how hot they are right now. Forget about And forget about the pay-per-views. And oh, by the way, and shout out to Oscar Willis of the Mac Life for pointing this out to Dana White, the Conor McGregor event, headlined event on June 29th in Las Vegas against Michael Chandler has already surpassed a $20 million gate. They have never had a $20 million gate. And that, now is the highest grossing event of all time, period. $20 million. You know how hard that is? You know how tough that is? And yes, I know there's economics and inflation, all this stuff. They are crushing it right now. And so it's it's pretty remarkable to see how far the sport has come and how far the organization has come. And kudos to them. They don't need anything. They don't need any help. They don't need any marketing. They don't need, we could talk about posters. We could talk about... We could talk about commercials. We could talk about merch. We could talk about all these things. And that's all that's all nice cherries on top, and that's all great and gravy. To be a combat sports organization and sell those kinds of tickets, generate that kind of gate with not even your A team as far as the, the fight card is concerned, not even like a super duper star. I don't even know how many ranked fighters were on that card. I don't think that many is insanely impressive. Insanely if I'm impressive. not mistaken, no top 10 fighters on the Not game. a single top 10 fighter. Not one. Highest grossing you. <laughs> and it was like St. Louis, too, like kind of a random location to be oh, yeah. the highest grossing one as well. Yeah, you had a couple guys, right? You had Buckley, you had Woodson, but you didn't have like top of the card local hero comes back, right? Unbelievable. And also, like, you know, an NHL arena. So it's not like a tiny play. Like, just remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Uh, Derek Lewis with a very impressive win over Rodrigo Nascimento. At first, you were like, hmm, why is he trying to wrestle the guy who's uh, more comfortable on the ground? But he figures it out in the third round. He knocks him out, and then it's classic Derek Lewis. The celebration was classic. <laughs> and then it goes even further than that. It's the celebration, boom, boom. It's the shorts off. It's the cup off. And then it's mooning of the crowd, which was just... I mean, I don't know if he's ever gone that far. Has he ever gone... This far? I don't know. Uh, I've never seen the moon. <laughs> Imagine you, you're you checking out this thing called the UFC for the first time. You're like, oh, let's watch the main event. And then all of a sudden, the big dude who wins in the main event just starts stripping after winning, after knocking the guy out, the crazy celebration. And then he just starts taking off his clothes. Man, what and a guy. Then you're a fan for life. <laughs> yeah, no. Everyone acts like it's a normal thing. Like Brennan Fitzgerald, when he starts taking the pants off, it's just like, oh, there, there he goes. There goes the pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like classic Derek Lewis. And the cup's going off. Is this going to a fan, a media member? Uh, one fan is uh, going home a happy person. The sneaky best part is the fanning him with the shorts. He's, he's, he's fanning him on the ground with the shorts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just oh, next level fuck. by Derek Lewis. How disrespectful imagine, is that? Imagine just getting fanned after oh, you got knocked out. That is out. disrespectful as hell. That is like dunking on a guy and like your junk goes in their face and you just yeah, kind of yeah. hang there for a minute. Like it's yeah. just, it's pretty bad. Um, also, like I know he was going for takedowns. It felt like he had the capability to knock him out at any moment. And then in the third round, his like corner had finally convinced him like, bro, just knock him out. That's all you have to do. Every time he went over to the corner, they were like, man, he is, you were just piecing him up on the feet. He's, you're hurting him with everything. Just knock him out. And then finally, the third round, he was like, all right, it's time to knock him out. I've had enough. That's what he did. Yeah. Um, can we get Derek Lewis versus Rosenstrike? Why hasn't this fight ever happened? I feel like that's the fight. No? I like it. That's Why the not? fight. I feel like those two guys have been circling each other. Like that's that's the one. What what is what is uh, Derek Lewis at this point? Derek Lewis is in that category of of Cerrone back in the day, and uh, several others. Who it doesn't matter if he's on a two fight losing streak, three fight like, and and now he kind of just goes like one yes, one no. Because he gives you moments like this, because he's so fun, because his interviews are so fun, the press conferences are so fun, everything is so fun with him. Um, he's going to have a place in the UFC for really as long as he wants it. Um, where, where's heavyweight? Here's heavyweight. Derek Lewis is 12. And Rosenstrike is 11. That's the fight. Rosenstrike, Lewis, they're both coming off nice wins. I'd like to see that. Now, what about our old friend, Joaquin Buckley, who I still maintain should have been the main event. Hashtag justice for Buckley. Uh, he had a dominant win. The crowd was hyped. You got to give St. Louis a lot of credit. They were super loud for that fight. Um, and again, not to be the... 
dead horse, but like that fight has no juice to it if it's at the apex. But then you put it in a, 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 a venue and a town that it means something to them, and all of a sudden, look at that! Look at that reaction. Uh, a very, very impressive win. Um, a dominant win by Buckley. Everything was going his way. He even went and hugged Randy Orton afterwards. The uh, the local kid in the front row that was cool as well. But then he gets on the microphone and he calls out Conor McGregor and it just kind of goes on and on. That was a moment for Buckley to actually call out someone who is attainable. I thought that that was such a blunder on his part. It, it, it couldn't have gone better. The whole week couldn't have gone better for him. The fight couldn't have gone better. He seemed like a superstar. Kudos to him. He had just fought at the end of March in Atlantic City. He wanted to be on this card. He asked to be in the main event. He was doing everything in his power to get that spot. He's even going to press conferences and asking the questions. And then you call out Conor McGregor. Like, at this point, enough people have called out Patty Pimblett. It's 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 a waste. The biggest one that's a waste is Connor. A, he's fighting, and B, let's just be honest, there's a thousand people ahead. Why would you waste the call out on Connor McGregor? And then the whole whole thing, it goes on and on and on and on. Were you guys not I, I, I felt like I was just I was I was I was disappointed. I was bummed for our guy Buckley. I thought that he had an opportunity there to call out someone. Like later on, I think he mentioned Gilbert Burns. That would have made sense, right? Uh, an attainable guy. I know he's high in the rankings, but you know, you call out someone who is attainable. You don't call out Conor McGregor in that moment. That does nothing. I don't put as much stock. I I had this debate on the post show. Like there's a lot of stock put into like, you have to nail the name in the post fight call out. It helps. Like it certainly has some kind of impact, but I don't like ultimately the Conor thing got enough attention that like, I guess he got what he wanted out of it. I think it personally think it's a little bit goofy. Um, but it had enough people talking at least about him in general. Um, and then he shows up to the post fight and says Gilbert Burns. So yeah, make the Gilbert Burns fight or somebody else, you know, Sean Brady seems like a, a viable kind of option. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, certainly like you could have done something different there. Uh, but I don't, I don't, unless you're, unless you're Conor McGregor or unless you're Michael Chandler, like you're really probably not getting whoever you call out anyway, just on the basis of that. Right. It will, it will be what the matchmakers give you anyway. Um, so I don't know how much he really like hurt himself, but I, he definitely didn't help himself. I'll say that. Waste. Just, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, my thing is it, nothing. It, it is just a, it's a, it's a waste. Like it's just not going to happen. There's no way that he's going to be fighting Conor McGregor. Uh, so yeah, I mean. Should have just called someone else out. Is there? Um... I mean, I th- Frank just mentioned. I think he called out Anheuser Busch to sponsor him after the Atlantic City one. By the way, I didn't mind that one. I didn't mind that one. I saw people saying that he fumbled that. Like, no, that makes sense. You're you're a Missouri guy. I didn't mind that one at all. I also don't even think you like to Eric's point. I don't even think you have to call someone out. I think this whole thing of like you got to call someone out. Or, I think that's all hogwash. Or how said. much? How much it actually plays into. That's what's it. gonna happen for you, man. I would have loved to see you and uh, you and Mike Heck going at it. Mike Heck was hot <laughs> about him calling out Conor McGregor. I'm sure you guys had a nice back and forth there. I I, I, I just agree think, with you completely. Yeah, it's it you, you like. Come on, give us a name. Come on, come on. Yeah, and yeah, then what? Too much. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's not it's not that important. It's no. really not. Like you can use that mic time for anything. Now, do, am I am I saying like Buckley aced it? No, certainly not. Again, I just said I personally found it goofy, but like. You know, it is what it is. And then you go to you show up to the press post fight press conference and say, Okay, realistically, I know I'm not getting Connor. Give me Gilbert Burns and all's well in the world. So that's We're a great fun. fight. That is a great fight. That is a great fight. I like that fight a lot. Did like- we you know what's unfortunate? I really do think Buckley is pretty good at 170 pounds. Like I th- I think he's solid. Oh, that, there. Yeah, I mean undefeated. He's killing but I really thought the Luke fight was gonna be a measuring stick and Luke just was not there for one reason or another. I still think we kind of don't know the answer for why that was such a bad performance from him. Um, and this one, I didn't learn much either. Like, you know, he faced somebody who's a little bit raw and like, you know, he, he was, he was utilizing the takedowns. Like I kind of still have to see with Buckley, but I, but it's looking pretty good at 170. It's looking pretty damn good so far. There's a lot of options. Kevin Holland. Uh, yeah. MVP. Well, MVP. That's, that's a nice little rematch there. Holland yeah. and Buckley. MVP. Don't hate it. MVP is 13. He's 11. It'd be a nice build up to it as well. Don't hate that one at all. Is he ready for the Sean Brady's? I'm not sure. Yeah, why not? I think I was gonna I, say, he was he's great ready on the for Gilbert Burns. He's ready for Sean yeah, Brady. No, no, I know. I don't think he's going to get the Gilbert Burns. Big jump, but maybe. Um, what about Carlos Alberg? Alonzo Menafield with a uh, very questionable game plan, just completely rushing Carlos Alberg, and then he got knocked out in 12 seconds. Uh, that was Rick, now officially a BJB. Oh, yeah. Blackjack believer. Oh. Ladies' night. I mean, he's we, the man. Me, and, me and Rick used to have. 
heated arguments back here post show about Carl Solberg. Yeah, I was about, not sold in, in the. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've been no, an Solberg disciple per- for a while. That Best looking guy in the yeah. UFC. How can you not support? That first performance against Kennedy had me like real, real suspect. I, I was looking at it with with a little bit of a a, a shifted eye. Uh, but now, like, dude. The dude's got, te- he's obviously technical. He's got a ton of power. And people seem to, like, want to get into firefights with him for some reason. And when you get into a firefight with him, it's it's probably a bad idea. So, yeah, I'm I'm in, I believe. Especially in this division, right? There's a lot of opportunity to really make noise in this division. So, Olberg, he seems like a dude. He's got the whole look. He's got the whole package. Good for he's him. Perfect. Sure does. Sure does. Turned on the bachelor to to get into cage fights. So <laughs> gotta gotta give him some respect for that. By the way, uh, speaking of uh, bad reality shows, uh, going back to Sharnika Johnson, did you know she was on the challenge? Uh, I meant to ask you this. on the Australian one. Yeah. Do you watch I did the Australian? Not know that. No, no, no. I don't watch the like oh, sorry. The, the local spin-offs? country ones. I watch some of the spinoffs. Like the USA has a good one because the, it has the cast from the original. Uh, Wait, isn't awesome. the USA just the? Isn't just. Like, no, there's also there's the challenge. There's oh, challenge all stars. There's challenge USA. There's challenge global. There's like an international competition. I I have not watched like the Australian one. The I think they did like one in Spain. I haven't watched those individual ones. Um, but that's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hope you ask her on? about that. MTV VH1. MTV. It's on. It, it used to be on MTV, but now it's pr- just part of Paramount. Oh, okay. okay, nice. But MTV is bigger overseas, so it might I'm sure. Yeah. Thing. I thought you were using bad reality TV show as a segue to get into tough starting soon. <laughs> Fuck. When does it start? Also, that's not a bad reality I have no show. No idea. It's the best. Does it start? Does I think it starts later this no month, idea. right? No idea. I got like a time hop thing from this time last year of uh, <laughs> the tough hang logo. I was like, wow, throwback. Yes. <laughs> Didn't get it renewed. You know, I scratched and Didn't clawed get renewed it for a second season, but uh, yeah, we got we got turned down. It's unfortunate. Um, Waldo Cortez Acosta. Yeah. Yeah, Robles to Spain. Yeah, uh, with the win. I kind, of, kind of broke the broke the secret there. Just take him down and you're, you're probably... Is that it? I feel, I feel like everyone just like... I, I heard a loud thud of people just jumping off the uh, Robles' yeah. uh, bandwagon there. I mean, he, he got taken down three times and that's all it took. And he lost. Yeah. Yeah, fraud checked, as the kids say. Nah, come on. People lose bad. It was, a, you know, a bit, bit of a jump up. All of a sudden... Uh, well, of course, as a cost of not getting a finish is... I mean, to be at heavyweight like that and, and to go to as many decisions as he did is, is it, wild. I mean, he had an infinite chances to finish him. There's certainly no excuse for, like, you know, the takedown defense was bad. Let's just call it what it was. Like, he looked hapless on the ground and does not have good takedown defense. But we're living in an era where in 2024, guys that raw are in the UFC. They used to be on the regional scene where they could get actual experience and knock out a few guys uh, on their path here. Now they're t- getting five more, six more, seven more fights before they're on this big stage. Uh, and now they're not, right? In 2024, that's now a UFC fight. And so he's getting fraud check. But in reality, it's really just they're in the UFC too soon now. They are they are signing yep. people who are who are too raw and would have been better in a regional promotion. 100%. That's a great point by you. Yeah, that, that that is a great point by you. I'm not fully off the... the I'm not either. Training. They just have to match them up correctly. And and I have no problem with that. When you have someone who is that raw and that new to the game, it's okay to match them up. Not everyone has to be tested four fights in, five fights in. Uh, I feel the same way about Bo Nickel. I know this is different, but like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to see Bo Nickel fight a top three guy. Give him ten more relatively easy fights. Um, Sean Woodson with a uh, nice win over Alex Caceres. Diego Fajeda got a win as well. Uh, Esteban Ribovich got a win. A nice win over Terrence McKenney, a knockout win, a brutal knockout win, a head kick win uh, for Esteban, uh, Tabitha Ricci, split decision win, Trey Waters with an interesting win over Billy Goff, Charles Johnson with the win as well. And what about Veronica Hardy? Veronica Hardy improving to 3-0 and now as Veronica Hardy. I think prior to that, when she fought, she wasn't a Hardy just yet. And... Uh, and Macedo. Right, I think yeah, because when she when she fought in twenty twenty, they hadn't been they were not married yet. Um, comes back last year, beats Juliana Miller, beats Jamie Lynn Horth, and now beats JJ Aldrich three and zero for the great Veronica Hardy. Love to see it, and I skipped over one because he's going to be joining us in a in a minute or two. Chase Hooper against Vyacheslav Borshev ends via submission for Mister Hooper a uh, Dars choke. 
is what it was called. But uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Here's the thing. He was he was annihilating Slava Claus. He was annihilating him. Um, ten eight. Dare I say maybe even a ten seven in the first round. It was right there. It was right freaking there. Um, but I don't know if he tapped. Did he tap? I don't think he tapped. Right? Agree or disagree? No, he didn't tap. Right. I don't know if he did or not, but he like he really was getting dominated so bad. I thought he could have called the fight due to strikes before that. So I don't really have an issue with it. Yeah, it was one way traffic. So we're we're not mad either way. Like that result was that result. Right. Uh a very impressive win once again for Chase Hooper, who continues to look great since uh moving up to lightweight. He is now three and oh since uh, moving up two stoppages in a row. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.